So let's get started with domain one. Okay, so this is uh, information security governance. So uh, when you talk about uh, governance, well, well, there are two things here. And at a very high level, we have um, the governance and management. Okay, so here is, um, this is from COBIT only. COBIT, uh, are you familiar with COBIT? COBIT is like a, like, it's the, right, you said, it's like a framework um, to help you implement some, uh, some key controls within the organization. And uh, so, and so many of the concepts here is uh, somewhat aligned with the COVID principles. So we will, we don't have to directly on the read uh, COVID, but many of the principles are. So this is one of them, which is uh, talks about uh, the governance, the difference within governance and management team. And we will obviously go over these again and again. So governance uh, is about providing that direction, providing a long-term horizon, the vision. And so what, what they do is they kind of provide the direction for the management team to move to a certain goals, a certain visions and so on. So the management team will plan and build and run, monitor, whatever they need to do. And the governance team is gonna direct the management team, uh, evaluate their performance, monitor and evaluate the performance. Okay, so when we talk about management team, this is typically the, the, the board of directors, uh, board of directors, BOD. Okay, the key stakeholders, they are the ones who be part of these governance team. Okay, maybe some owners or whatever, the, the key stakeholders are part of these uh, governance team. The other ones who would, who are gonna give uh, the direction that this is what we, where we are headed, uh, this is what we want to do. And who do you think uh, leads the management team? Management team is led by the CEO. And of course, uh, CTO, everybody uh, is part of his team. So we're not talking about anything IT right now. We just have a very difference between governance and management at a very high level. So we have governance and the management team. And then and then we will uh, get into the, the various different uh, governance. So we have, uh, from governance, we have IT governance and IT security governance within it. So. It's a subset of that. So I can have, uh, within it, I can have, let's say, IT governance, IT governance. And within that, I can have uh, IT security governance. Yeah, so all part of governance only. So there might be specific team members who've been delegated that, act, that those responsibilities, IT security governance. Okay, it's quite horrible <laughs> to write here, but I hope you understand here. Yeah, so that's a very high level understanding about uh, governance and uh, management. Let's see what we have to understand here. Let's go back there. Okay, so here we talked about um, security, information security governance. This is a subset of the governance. Governance will look into various aspects of governance, right? There are multiple things it might look into. And here, um, we only talking about the information security governance, which is a subset of the overall governance. And so it says, it's, let's read this thing. It says, it, uh, I said, define the domain as follows, establish, uh, maintain an information security governance framework and supporting process to ensure that the information security strategy is aligned with organization goals and objectives. Okay. So this is, uh, again, one of the key aspects that is expected out of all of the information security manager. So which is to align your information security, okay, with organization goals and objectives. That's that's very important. Basically what we're saying is that IT or ID security, they all have to be to be aligned with, with the, the organization. It cannot be running in silos. Okay. So we need to understand uh, what the goals are, what the objectives are, what the missions are. Mission is not mentioned here, but again the mission is uh, kind of a long term mission and vision to the long term strategic uh, direction that the organization has the reason why an organization exists so we need to understand those things and be able to support it uh, at a very high level okay okay so this is another interesting line here so it says organizations usually establish governance through a steering committee steering committee that is responsible for setting long term business strategy and by making changes to ensure that the business process continues to support business strategy and the organization's overall needs. For governance, you have these steering committee, right? So if for IT, you will have IT steering committee or IT security steering committee and so on. So there could be different uh, teams, uh, different steering committees, but part of the same governance team. So they might be uh, looking into those things. Just, just make note of this, okay? So the steering committee is the one which will uh, be looking into those. Okay, so uh, let's focus on introduction to information security governance. So we will understand uh, how we will establish it, how we're going to manage, uh, measure it, and and so on. So uh, how how the you know the the 
performance is going to be measured. So those are the things we'll discuss here in this uh, information security governance. Strategy and, uh, and so what, what is a strategy? Now, strategy is something which is at a very high level and usually it's a very, uh, it's a way to achieve your objectives, your missions, your visions. Okay. And then you have uh, policies for that. You have standards. We'll, we'll talk about these uh, standards, processes, controls. We'll under, try to understand all of these uh, in, in, in certain detail. So I'm going to talk about uh, some basic concepts. So one of them is, uh, this is again, slightly, uh, you know, uh, slightly interesting uh, techni technical here, uh, but basic concept we need to understand about security. Okay. So which for that, we need to understand something called a CIA, CIA triad. And the CIA stands for integrity, confidentiality, and uh, availability. The threats could be intentional attacks, accidental leakages, authentication and authorization failures, hardware, software failures, etc. So we'll, we'll discuss some of them. We'll not discuss all of them. And in, in this particular uh, course, we're not, we're not getting, getting into all of these concepts here. Many of you will not get into these things, encryption and all this stuff. But what, what you need to understand is, yes, the, uh, you know, the, the security, you know, the Confidential is important. So, uh, similarly, the integrity. Integrity is about uh, the information being protected against any unintentional, uh, so intent, un uh, intentional or unauthorized changes. Okay, somebody who's not authorized is making those changes in the system. Uh, well, we need to protect that against such uh, such things. Okay, so if you're not authorized to make changes, you not you will not make change. But if you if you are authorized, then you can make those changes. That's what integrity means. And again, there can be malicious users who, you know, make those changes. Again, you don't need to know all of these things, but I just want you to understand what uh, integrity means. And, and there are, again, different ways to protect that, uh, like encryption, hash, and checksums, and, and so on. Okay, these are, again, not really important for you uh, for this particular course. And the last bit here is about availability. So where we are able to ensure that the systems and data are available and on demand according to agreed upon parameters. So whenever you take some kind of a, a, a service from a third party, there's a very important document that you kind of uh, sign with them. What, what is that document called? Any idea? And so availability always never is, it's never hundred percent. So usually you have 99.9% or 98% availability or whatever. Again, but, but the idea here is that those systems must be available on demand as as per your agreement terms. Okay, so again, uh, we, we're not getting all the details, but what I would just want you to understand is that you know th there are these uh, CIA it, because as a security uh, practitioner, you need to be able to protect the CIA of your systems. Okay, and we might talk about these terms: confidentiality, integrity, availability later on. And uh, I want you to be kind of you know be familiar with whatever we're discussing. Uh, at that point of time, okay. Uh, there are obviously various different courses. I, I don't want to get into those things. Uh, we will discuss this as and when we uh, get that. Now, what we'll talk about is um, is a security policy, and and a security policy uh, again is a very important document because uh, just a second. So uh, again, having a proper security is absolutely important for any ongoing business. So without security, uh, without information security, or any 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 security. Right. So while the your, your, the course is focused on information security only, uh, the security actually is a huge, uh, you know, there's a huge different um, meaning to it. So there's a lot, a lot of things that needs to be looked into when you talk about uh, uh, security. Anyways, but the point here is that the security is essential. Now, if you, if your information, if your security is not is compromised, then your business may not uh, survive. And and the security must be endorsed by the senior management. The policies must be endorsed by the senior management. It shows their commitment towards security, right? So if when they kind of sign on the secu security policy, it's usually the top people, the CEO or whoever the whoever the you know senior management uh, uh, is, they will sign on the security policy. And why? Because they need to take ownership of this. The security has to be top down always. Okay, it has to be top down, and they will take the responsibilities for that. And usually, again, if there is no policy, then everybody decides their own appropriate behavior, and that may or may not always be aligned to your organization's requirements. So you have to ensure that everybody kind of follows that, and uh, also 
having security policies in place that's usually a compliance requirement so these are some of the reasons why um, you know we have uh, information security uh, security policies and um, policies are usually top down as i said before okay uh, it, it must be generic non technical and easily understood uh, policies are mandatory and these are reviewed on a regular basis okay so so we said uh, top down generic easily understood it's a mandatory statement it, it is reviewed on a periodic manner and uh, policy charts so how do you derive a policy now uh, there is a you have to look into the regulations the existing regulations the existing policies okay laws directives whatever so suppose you you're aware i mean you you're from you're based out of uk isn't it so you must have worked with uh, gdpr in the past yeah, so in as a company in the in the us uh, in the uk rather you or rather eu rather uh, gdpr becomes one of the you know the important factor that needs to be considered and and that's how you uh, one of the first thing that you will uh, look into while you are creating your own policies then you have your own organization policies and then you can have your own uh, functional policies hr it finance and so policies are as i said a quite a high level and uh, so in order to support those uh, high level policies you may have more detailed documents such as uh, standards procedures and uh, guidelines okay so these are mostly strategic okay so what does strategic mean it means long term okay so long term like for example gdpr is going to change every year and the answer is no it doesn't right uh, this is here to stay for many years and similarly policies does it change policy policies are changing every year no they, they don't change normally okay for example a policy to to have a firewall in the organization are you going to say tomorrow that let's not have a firewall very unlikely so these are very strategic long term and and the these documents standards procedures guidelines these are more tactical okay tactical means short term all right so um, just to give you a, a, an idea say let's say you say you have a policy to have a firewall okay so that remains that doesn't change very often it's quite likely to, unlikely to change uh, in the near future also so you'll say you'll have a net, uh, you know, network based policy there might be some uh, you know small changes here and there minor changes but uh, but the policy to have a firewall is something that is unlikely to change now what could change is so today you're using a uh, let's say a, a sophos firewall and tomorrow you say okay let's move on to a cisco firewall right now that becomes a more of a standard okay the standards change so when the standards change the procedures of how to do those things and guidelines could also change because these are tactical tactical are usually within a period of one month a one year horizon okay so those things uh, could change but otherwise the standard itself uh, so the policy itself they don't normally change all right so we'll understand uh, the difference within standards uh, procedures guidelines and so on but before that uh, let's understand the different components of a security policy and usually a policy document would have purposes and scope and responsibilities and compliance um, have you have you seen security policies so this is from sans and they give you a range of uh, policy documents like many of the, the, lots of them there and i'll quickly take you through one of them this is about application security policy again we don't have to get into too much into technical details here but just wanted to show you the important uh, aspects of this we have the purpose uh, there's this scope okay now scope is important purpose why because we want to define a web application security assessment whatever scope okay so it covers okay this is only for the company or whatever you know for policy itself okay it's not very technical you should be able, should be able to understand these things the compliance again how do we measure compliance what are the exceptions what are the non-compliance and what are the related standards policies and processes so these are all uh, mentioned here in the policy document so what i wanted to do is i'll have to um so uh, today's been a lot not a not a really good day for me <laughs> there's some some uh, call that i need to quickly attend and so what i would request you to do is very quickly go through these uh, these policies and i will and i'll have to take a very quick call then i can uh, come back and i think then i'll be able to uh, kind of uh, continue with the lesson would that be okay with you all right so um, 
let's continue. Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, the various components, policy, and uh, we saw these are some of the important ones. Like, for example, if you did not have compliance, then people would not be able to, people may not just uh, follow the policy if they don't see that if they don't uh, the non-compliance uh, you know if, if for example we, we, we looked at that and we saw that if there would there would be disciplinary issues right so they might be terminated if they don't follow the policy so those things have to be clearly specified otherwise uh, no, no one is going to follow the policy all right so let's uh, understand the uh, other uh, components of this which is the uh, standard now a standard is usually again a mandatory rule or things to be followed which confirms to a policy now what do i mean by that as i give you an example earlier on we i give an example say the policy was to have a firewall so the standard was making it more specific saying that we're going to use a a cisco firewall or are we going to use this something very specific are we going to use ISO 27001 whatever that specific standard is okay so instead of so but these things can change right but these things could change so tomorrow i want to use some other framework or some other standard that is absolutely possible and so these are mostly uh, mandatory actions so you will see words like must will shall and so on so standards makes your policy more specific 